Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom, along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we welcome our special guest, Michelle Atlas. Michelle, who is a professional certified coach, empowers creative, intuitive women entrepreneurs to reclaim their self-trust so that they can create change they did not think possible in their relationship to money, their businesses, and themselves. She is one part business mentor, one part shadow detective, one part spiritual guide, and one part sole purpose midwife. She is the author of the Daily Ohm course, Overcoming Money Shame, and is in the process of writing her first book, The Sovereign Woman Entrepreneur. Learn to trust yourself more than anyone else so you can grow a prosperous business rooted in your intuition, creativity, and wisdom. Michelle coaches and speaks internationally on the money empowerment and living resiliently. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to the show today, Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much, Angel. I'm so happy to be here. I'm really excited about our time together today because money shame is a huge and very interesting topic especially I think for women and women entrepreneurs. So I'd love to hear from you a little bit of your own backstory about how you came to be a part sole purpose midwife, part spiritual guide, part shadow detective, part business mentor. And what was the money shame piece that was part of your journey? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Juicy question, (laughs) right? Yeah, so I'm going to start, you know, I will. So, you know, for all sorts of family related reasons, transformation became my middle name from the time I was about 13 years old. And um, I just knew that one way or another, I was going to uh, move through and grow and evolve through the dysfunction at home and, um, you know, come into a place of, you know, of happiness and expression and joy. And I didn't know exactly how that was going to happen, but I really, I had that sense within that resilient sense within that it was going to happen. I was going to find my way. So I grew up with a mother who was very restrictive when it came to money and both with herself and with me and and really everyone, you know, her answer to every desire was no. And so there was a lot of hand slapping around desire and around, I was very visual, very artistic. And so I always loved beautiful things and gravitated towards them. And with her her sort of denying response, I grew up with a very confused and distorted relationship to desire, to what it was okay to want and to what it was, you know, to spending and saving. It was all kind of mixed up for me. Fast forward many, many years, found myself um, and, you know, I grew up feeling guilty and undeserving, of, guilty around wanting anything and undeserving of just about everything. Mm-hmm. Fast forward many, many years, found myself, you know, she had passed quite young, found myself newly divorced, a bunch, great credit, bunch of credit cards, nobody there to slap my hands. And I discovered the art of shopping to fill a void. <laughs> and yes, especially, you know, being artistic, that's not a hard thing to do. And so, you know, over time, I accrued debt, as you might imagine, which I had never had. And with that came a lot of self-loathing and kind of a vicious cycle of this pendulum between I would see the debt and I would restrict myself. The only thing I knew to do was restrict myself like she did. And then I'd start to have this whole experience of that again. 
And the only release valve I could find at that point was buying something. And so it was a very disempowering cycle. I tried, I read all kinds of books by money gurus, and there are many great ones. I tried all sorts of things. Nothing was really sustainable. I would try something for a short while and I would fall off the wagon again, kind of like a yo-yo diet. So ultimately what happened was when I became an entrepreneur, it became glaringly clear to me that I needed to heal my own money blind spots if I wanted. I, I felt masterful with, with regard to my, trans, my big transformational toolbox, lots of training, lots of life wisdom, lots of credentialing, but this money stuff was a big issue. And so I bumped into the work of Kendall Summerhawk at the time, and I she authored this beautiful, powerful program using money archetypes to help women, uh, particularly you know, more intuitive, sensitive, creative women, entrepreneurs, discover their money personality, meaning their unique money gifts and strengths and their specific money blind spots. And I just recognized that, you know, this was, you know, it was one of those magnetic poles. I became licensed in the program and went through a deep training myself and had some money breakthroughs that were so potent and, and so profound, like nothing I'd ever experienced through all that other stuff I had done. The main thing that I realized was that I had been trying to be somebody else when it came to money most of my life. I was, I was following somebody else's list of shoulds and shouldn'ts, both with regard to money and the way I was trying to grow my business. And when I saw my money personality profile through taking this money archetype quiz, it immediately flushed out, you know, these beautiful strengths and gifts that were nothing like my mother and, and some key blind spots that were very illuminating. And I had a profound experience of self-forgiveness. Like in that moment, it was a real whopper of a, just one of those deep, really memorable experiences of, you know, a breakthrough, a spiritual breakthrough. So I felt this incredible energetic release through my whole body of this shame that I didn't know I'd been carrying for a very, very, very long time. Went shopping. Next time I found myself shopping, I'm not one of these coaches that, you know, says, you know, abracadabra, you know, you've had one breakthrough, now you should never have another issue. <laughs> you know, um, I know that lasting, you know, we can have ahas at any moment, but lasting transformation occurs over time in layers, typically. <laughs> but the next time I went shopping, and I saw something beautiful that was beyond my means, unlike other times where to feel that love and nurturance and all those good feelings, I had to buy the thing, whether I could afford it or not. This time, very organically, when I considered buying it, these another powerful experience, these words from deep within, way beyond the mind, I'm enough, showed up. And when I heard I'm enough, I felt another release, and I, and I came into alignment with those feelings of love and nurturance occurring by not buying the thing that I couldn't afford mm -hmm. instead of buying it. It was like a miracle, truly. It was really, you know, a very touching moment. And from that point on, I've been able to kind of align. This is years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. I've aligned with that internal compass, which became available to me through this work. Beautiful. All right. So, you know, I know that there are many wickedly smart women who are listening to this show and, uh, you know, myself included and yourself included who end up being guided or being inspired to create their entrepreneurship. And, you know, one of the places in my own journey where I actually ended up utilizing credit extensively was in investing in myself. And so I'd love to have you speak a little bit about the difference or maybe the sameness of creating debt where, you know, in your case, it might've been buying a beautiful thing. In my case, I created a significant amount of debt investing in myself. And, and in the coaching industry, there's often a big call from leaders and mentors and coaches to say, do what it takes to invest in yourself. And I've seen a lot of people have accumulated a lot of debt in that way. So I'd love to have you speak a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah, that is an excellent and powerful question. And I know just what you mean. So my experience with that, because I, you know, like you, I work with women entrepreneurs um, who are on this journey. And, and like you said, we are, we are them. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. My experience with this is that when I was out of alignment, 
I was investing in expensive coaching programs and in expensive services that did not, that were not really in alignment with my nature. That I was investing in coaches that were sort of antithetical to my nature and, and constantly pushing me to do things that were depleting to me or making me miserable, you know, in the spirit of growth. And I went and it was another level. This is a really big, important point. It was another level of self abandonment, right? Because it's just another way of not trusting yourself. It's another way of abandoning that deep inner compass that everyone has. So whether it's buying stuff you can't afford or whether it's buying services from someone who you've given authority to that is, you know, again, an authority outside of you, that's just another excuse or, or way of, of not, you know, presencing and, and being deeply there for and with yourself. I think when you're, when you're making your decisions based on whether it's insidious and subtle or more gross and overt lack of self-trust, you're going to be more likely to not get a return on your investment. And so those investments will deplete you. They will become burdensome debt. When you come into deeper alignment with your inner guidance and your, you, know, you, you return to that home within that sovereign self that we all have, you know, start to shed the layers of conditioning and messaging and stories that get piled on top of it, come home to that deeper truth, you're going to make choices and to invest, we, we all need support, we all need to be investing in services. I learned the hard way, you know, when I tried not to that support deficit is not pretty. So we need support. And but you're going to be likely to invest, as I have been now for many years, fortunately, in services that do yield a beautiful return on your investment that make you feel good and feel supported, truly supported, that, you know, with people who see you and can really help you become a much more, you know, um, soul-centered expression of your deepest of what you're really here for, your deepest soul's calling. And that also activates more money flow for you. Mm -hmm. So it's this beautiful circle. And or upward spiral. I like to consider yeah, it an upward, upward spiral. spiral. <laughs> it, it is a beautiful upward spiral. I, I, I just said something about that yesterday to somebody. And uh, But it starts with self-connection. It's This is about our, our relationship with ourself is the most important relationship we'll ever have. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that, you're going to choose you know, mentors and coaches and boyfriends and husbands and wives that are that are the right people. You know? All the things. Yeah, right. beautiful. Well, we're already at the break. But when we come back, we're going to dive in a lot deeper to this whole idea of reclaiming self-trust or building self-trust. And uh, we're also going to talk about the money archetype quiz and personalities and so forth. So, but right now, uh, Wickedly Smart Women, we could use your help. If you are enjoying the show and want us to stay on the air, please consider making a donation at www.wikilysmartwomen.com. We are celebrating. We just actually found out we've won our second award. This time uh, we won the 2021 Award of Distinction in the 27th Annual Communicator Awards. So yay and thank you to all of our listeners around the world and all of our amazing guests, just like Michelle, who have come on to help make this show so special and award-winning and powerful. So we definitely want you to help us share the show as well by letting your lovely lady friends know who you think might benefit from our content. And I want to say a big thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We are welcoming thousands and thousands of downloads from all over the world. And I do want to shout out this week to our listeners. We have listeners now downloading in 81 countries. So I want to shout out this week to our listeners in Panama, in the Cayman Islands, and in Switzerland, which are all kind of like money countries to me. <laughs> Panama, the Cayman Islands, and Switzerland, and we will be right back with Michelle Atlas. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? 
Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by women in transition, women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your Wealthy Life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And we are back with Michelle Atlas. You can find out more about Michelle and you can also take the quiz that she mentioned in the first half of the show, uh, which is the money archetype quiz. It's a money personality assessment by going to michelleatlas.com. We will have the link for that in the show notes. Uh, There will also be some other links in the show notes. So please make sure that you go ahead and pay attention to those and click all those links and get into Michelle's world, especially if you're resonating in any way, either as a woman entrepreneur who is, you know, working through your own money issues as you are building your business, or a woman who may be carrying money shame as a result of, you know, the conditioning you might have received as a child from your own family of origin. So before we went to the break, Michelle, we were talking a little bit about the creation of debt in business. And we also, you also mentioned your own personal story about you created debt to fill, it was essentially to fill this void that, you know, then ultimately you had an epiphany and a healing and a changing point, a couple of changing points in your life where all of a sudden you no longer needed to engage in those behaviors. But I think the curious question that I have right now is once you had that shift, For any of our listeners who are still in the shame place, who are still in the behavior pattern place, you know, one of the things that happens is we get into the time thing, like, oh my God, how long is it going to take me to get to where I actually want to go? And how long am, how many, how much longer am I going to be doing this? So I'd love to have you talk a little bit about, you know, what amount of time once you did have that shift, were you able to turn things around for yourself? and anchor in the new momentum so that you could continue to build more and more self-trust. Right, right. Yeah. So I think that, you know, energetically, it just from the moment that I stopped spending, you know, out of balance, there was, there was an instant shift. I began to, you know, my bank account instantly began to grow, you know, and, So, you know, because I wasn't, I wasn't getting sort of, so to speak, getting rid of everything that came in so, you know, quickly. And I think that what the other dimensions to all of this that began to happen, I realized that there was a very, again, even an even more subtle dimension that involves self-forgiveness. As I said, that was the first breakthrough was a profound experience of self-forgiveness, which is hard to put your, which is hard for a lot of women to put their finger on just like where they're not forgiving themselves, where they're holding on in that way. And so that's just something I mentioned, you know, just as sort of another light bulb to pay attention to kind of get curious about. In terms of the trajectory and the timeline, I would say that things began to get better be really right from that point on and it was gradual and then there were various points so i i i think it's important to really acknowledge two things one that change can happen in a moment and i have more recently had more like sort of i wouldn't say sudden but more rapid growth shifts where i'm seeing you know just making more money, you know, seeing a more rapid kind of rapidly growing savings account that can happen to anybody at any time. And so no matter how much debt you have or how much shame you have, or how much you've kind of not understood how to kind of navigate this path to grow a business effectively and and prosperously, again, you can see changes that they can happen at any time. And at the same time, I'd say that you have to be really careful of all the messaging in the marketplace because it can lead you to believe that you're failing or that something is wrong if it's not happening overnight. 
Mm. And I really, yeah, I really want to speak to that. I just was, that was like trying to come up here. And I was like, yeah. And so, because it will leave so many women feeling like a failure, no matter what they do, even when they're doing all the right things and they are growing and, and success is happening their way. And according to their definition, their trajectory, their path. So, um, yeah, I would say in terms to be specific, I would say that probably over a period of like the next, uh, you know, five years or so, four to five years or so, things inc- became increased, uh, got increasingly better and better. Um, I also found myself, once I had those breakthroughs, I found myself making more powerful decisions, bolder decisions to change the entire equation of my life, which led to, you know, better money flow. So I sold my house, mm-hmm. um, which every dime I was making in my business was going into my big, beautiful, historic house. And I I thought I would never leave it and that I'd be devastated. Once I got the clarity that it needed to be let go of, I felt infused with energy, found a beautiful apartment right away, may, began saving massive amounts of money right away. So, you you know, you start to just free yourself up and it's a combination mm. of these kind of magical breakthroughs that you can't control and then very intentional, powerful steps that you can choose to make. Mm. Beautiful. I love it. Well, one thing that came when when you were speaking was that it's it's almost impossible to ultimately sustain any business that is, you know, built in a foundation of self-abuse or self-recrimination or, you know, lack of self-trust. Ultimately, even if you can project for a very long time, it will ultimately collapse. And I've seen it multiple times across uh, the industry with colleagues and friends and, and all of those things that we can end up hitting up against that wall that requires us to do that deep inner work to heal whatever is underneath those behaviors. And then everything has to collapse that was part of that old reality. So great. All right. I want to talk uh, briefly again about the money archetype quiz. Can you tell us a little Mm -hmm. bit about what somebody might discover as a result of taking that quiz and maybe give an example of a client that you have helped who took the quiz and had a particular archetype? Yeah, absolutely. That's a fantastic question. So the quiz is wonderful. It takes just about 10 minutes, you know, not a huge amount of your time. It's, you know, first, first thought is best thought, you know, don't overthink. It's extremely accurate and um, amazingly accurate. The questions in and of themselves are provocative. Just taking the quiz, you'll probably start to get insights and you'll get an automated snapshot of your results right away. It'll flush out your money personality profile, which really will tell you if you know anything about archetypes, it'll it'll reveal your persona and your shadow. So the part of you that you are expressing that has very specific gifts and strengths that you can, by understanding this information, choose to play more fully too and express more fully and kind of stop trying to do some of the things that are really, you know, kind of swimming upstream, feel like they're, you're swimming upstream. And then it's really powerful in illuminating, you know, what we would call your money shadow. And that's where, you know, we all have, we've all received messages about, you know, our family values. You know, this is how we save. This is what generosity means in in our family. This is what selfishness means. And we, you know, as children, most of us want love. And so we automatically just start to kind of say, okay, I just won't be that way then, even though maybe it's my nature, you know, or I just won't say that anymore or do that anymore. And we disown these parts. And so this quiz will flush out where you're doing that with regard to money behaviors, because wherever you're suppressing or putting some part of you in the closet, you're also suppressing energy that could that that um, typically is another portal to money flow once you open that door again. Mm-hmm. So there are eight money archetypes, and I'll give you an example. One person is coming to mind. I'm just going to tune in for a second and see if anybody else is. This individual, I, I think I'll go with her. She just came right up. So one of the money archetypes is is nurturer, and a whole lot of women have a, a strong nurturer archetype. Right, no surprise in the lead. So some of the gifts of nurture are, you know, that we are just, you know, naturally attuned to others' potential, 
to others' gifts, to what others are feeling. And we're, we, we love to help other people actualize their strengths and gifts. So we're great team leaders if we're in a conventional job. And we're great you know, leaders for our clients if we have our own business. And the downside for with Nurture is the inability to sponsor yourself first. So there's a tremendous amount of power leakage in terms of over-delivering, over-giving, overdoing, undercharging, because, and what's driving all of that for the nurture is a sense that you know, I'm not enough. And if it's not conscious, then you're gonna find yourself depleting yourself in all kinds of ways. So um, this was the case with my, my the client that's coming to mind. And she was spending money on people. She, she actually was making good money So this wasn't somebody who wasn't making enough money, but she was spending it as fast as she was making it. And, you know, all kinds of people that were also making good money and didn't need her money (laughs) and all kinds of things, you know, that really, you know, where she wasn't really serving anything by in the way that she was spending. And while she was doing that, she was unable to identify the vision for her own business and her own life that we were trying to excavate together. It was like just impossible for her to kind of, tune into what she wanted for herself. And so we began to just address conversations she could have with family members and where she was paying for this and paying for that when they, again, they all had good jobs. They were all perfectly competent. She began to take some really bold steps for her telling people that she was, you know, happy to do this, but they would be paying their own way, you know, for a change. Much to her shock, everybody in her world said, fine. (laughs) no problem. You know, we like, we never really needed you to do this anyway. We never needed you to send our son to college because we actually could send our own son to college. Things like that. Big stuff. Yeah. Martyr. That's almost like martyr right there. (laughs) And on the opposite end of this. Yes. And on the, on the dysfunctional, every archetype has the highly high functioning end and the dysfunctional end on the dysfunctional end. It is the martyr. Yeah. The nurture. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly it. And that's what was happening. So she she pulled back She be, and she did it really consciously and beautifully through conversations with people she loved. They were all on board. And the moment, it was just really cool because what I saw was the moment she did this, all of a sudden her own vision began to emerge. Her her passion for what she wanted, her she she actually had just retired and was kind of off on her own in doing her own her own thing. And she just began to have these beautiful visions for her retirement home. And she actually had a vision of moving to another state. And she just suddenly started to know. And now she's just doing this amazing humanitarian work in her in her business. And Yay. Um, it's just incredible. Yeah. Beautiful. Just thriving, you know. Beautiful. Thriving. And that's exactly what we want. Well, we are already at the end of the show. So listeners, we want you to thrive and we want to encourage you to go ahead and take that money archetype quiz to get some clarity on exactly specifically and precisely what's going on with you and to discover your strengths and some of the blind spots that you might have. And then proceed from there if you feel in right alignment to explore more of what Michelle has to offer. Michelle, it's been my pleasure to have you here today. I'm so grateful for your presence on the show and your presence on the planet. Thank you so much for being here. And listeners, we love feedback. So please let us know what you thought of today's show by calling into our listener line. We'll have that in the show notes. Or you can send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. Thanks for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.